having a, a partner like ARM uh, come in uh, with Pradeep to support the work we're doing reinforces the message uh, not only at a local community level but at a corporate level that corporates recognize um, that they can bring um, additional value to this process, they can leverage um, funding and support to this process and it, it, it's, uh, it draws the full circle, it develops that full circle. We've got communities, we've got conservation organizations and now we've got corporates, Kenyan corporates involved in a Kenyan solution to a Kenyan problem. We've got to be proactive. We've got to be part of the communities that we work in because the government cannot reach everywhere. The government cannot um, fund every requirement. I mean, it's our fervent hope that within the next 18 months to two years, we'll be moving Rhino from Lewa into a community conservancy in northern Kenya, a Samburu conservancy. The fence is almost complete. Um, we're still raising funds to enable us to, to put in the infrastructure there and to, to train the people to be able to protect those animals and, and manage those animals. And that would be a huge, huge um, step forward to have a community owning those animals and managing those animals. Starting tomorrow, we'll be moving Rhino from Lewa onto our adjoining conservancy to the west of us, Barana Conservancy making uh, another 32,000 acres worth of, of rhino habitat available. Uh, the Barana Conservancy has a common boundary with, with Lewa and so it's been part of our game plan for a long time to uh, become a sort of fully integrated ecosystem. The easiest way to do that um, is to establish a founder population of, of black rhino. So the Barana Conservancy was brought into the Kenya Wildlife Service strategy for um, endangered species um, for black rhino which runs from 2012 to 2018 and we're the only uh, private sanctuary uh, in that program. My name is Patrick Molandi from KWS Headquarters Veterinary Capture Unit. Uh, we are doing the translocation of rhinos from uh, from Lewa to Borana. The, the ground crew and uh, the fixed wing pilot has, uh, has already located the, the rhino. So <coughs> we want to load up and be ready for, for that in the rhino. So I'll pick up the, the dirt which is uh, pressurized. So in doing our job we are headed by a drug and uh, here is the dart. It's uh, generally a tranquilizing dart. And uh, there's a drug inside. And uh, it's a narcotic. Very, very powerful narcotic. And I'm ready to go for the chopper and dart uh, the animal. In order for, for your delivery to be accurate, you have to go for a good place, a good place with a good body part, with, with, with good muscle and with good circulation. And in about 7 to 10 minutes, depending on the dose you're using and depending on the size of the animal, the animal will go down. It's critical, it's critical that uh, a vet gets there on time and uh, able to stabilize the animal using other drugs. It is only then that uh, the capture team will come and uh, you are able to either input a transmitter. Now this is a normal transmitter that we are fixing on uh, all the rhinos so that uh, we can ease monitoring. It is designed in such a way that it's going to be sending signals every four hours from um, 7 in the morning up to 11 and then uh, from 3 in the afternoon up to later in the evening and uh, it's going to assist in monitoring. This morning we flew and had guys on the ground and we found the first six rhino that were released here. We found them all before 8.30 so we're pretty confident that we've got the technology now to look after these um, 
these animals. So they do this test. Okay. So you're supposed to go for sample. So you just take the sample as a preservative to preserve the tissue. What it means for for Leo and Nakuru is that they're going to get a bit of extra space, but it's also a huge triumph for the Penny Wildlife Service because um, you know they're exporting rhino out of their national parks, um, and the reason they're doing that is because they've got too many. And uh, the next stage, obviously, and this is a global issue, we can do the work on the ground here, looking after them as best as we can. But uh, the global issue is to um, is to stop killing them for. My name is John Pameri, a ship security for Lewa Wildlife Conservancy. And uh, as you see, we are translocating uh, 11 rhinos to Borana Ranch, where we are trying to reduce the number of our rhinos here in Lewa. We have reached to the current capacity, so we, that's why we are moving some of the rhinos to, to Borana. Wildlife veterinarians, conservationists, pilots, everyone is a cocktail of skills from the best of people. But still there's a huge challenge. Last year there was a total of 31 rhino killed, 31 rhino poached in Kenya. This year to date there have been 35. Uh, so the figures are increasing, the pressure is increasing. There are two key challenges to, to rhino in this country and I sense globally. One is the poaching, and two is the lack of available habitat. Uh, we on Lewa here have too many rhino for the habitat that we have. They've bred so effectively, we've managed them so effectively, that we now have too many. And if we continue to hold those animals, um, the efficiency of their breeding will decrease, um, and the growth of that population will decrease. So you're either losing rhino from poaching, or you're losing rhino because they're not being born. Despite a bit of action yesterday, uh, all the subsequent releases have been uh, perfect, you know, into wind, the rhino have come out very calmly. These black rhino, particularly the males, need a huge um, home range and, and once they start uh, getting these ter territorial overlaps, they, um, they, uh, they stop breeding and they, they start fighting. And so this is really about creating more secure habitat. Killing of elephants, killing of rhinos does not help this country. The only way we can get uh, development is to maintain uh, the conservancy of these animals and ensure that these animals are not, are not killed by poachers. So for me it's, it's pretty clear that uh, Kenyan corporates have a, a serious role to play uh, in Kenya to facilitate this already proven um, process of demonstrating to Kenyans that wildlife uh, is an asset and it's an asset that they can benefit from.